tucked off Highway 101, just south of Lincoln City, change is afoot. Yeah. For the last century or so, this land was used for cattle grazing, with levees to keep floodwaters out and tide gates to restrict the natural flow of nearby Drift Creek. But soon, it'll be a wetland, as it was for centuries before humans intervened. We're taking land that was formerly pasture, uh, removing the dikes and any kind of uh, infrastructure that would have kept water out of the site so that it could be grazed by cattle, um, and then reintroducing tidal influence. So That's Kate Iaquinto. You can see this is the main uh, channel that we're going to be excavating. Manager of the Siletz Bay National Wildlife so Refuge. So all the lower estuary is really... And work um, like this, habitat restoration that will benefit struggling coho salmon, is likely to see a huge uptick in coming years. Yep, there's some little fish down in there. As money from two massive federal bills begins filtering down to nonprofits like the Midcoast Watersheds Council. And there is a family otter that live around here too, so. Evan Hayduck, who leads the council, said he's never seen anything close to the amount of money that will soon be available for restoration work. It is a great time to be an executive director of a watershed council right now because there is funding coming out of every, every pathway. The work being done on Drift Creek which is a collaboration between Haydick's group, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and several other nonprofits and government agencies, it's important for salmon. So this is really, really good habitat for juvenile fish. But it'll do a ton of good for other species too. So this is a, a project that benefits coho salmon, but it also benefits a lot of the birds that use this type of area. It's really, the, you know, the invertebrates, the whole community will benefit uh, from bringing the habitat back to a more natural state. But that means wholly transforming the entire 75 acre parcel. Um, a lot of these agricultural sites would be, um, have dikes built around them and all the existing channels filled in to make a nice clean, flat pasture for cattle. Clean and flat is not what nature does best and it's not what works best for nature. We always say messy equals habitat. If it's a mess of logs and trees and all kinds of stuff, that's where the fish are, are using the area, and, and that's what we're trying to recreate. After several years of planning and design, crews have been working over the last few weeks to restore the messy salmon habitat nature would have provided. They've cut down most of the levees, leaving some mounds to provide higher ground when the area turns back into a floodplain. They've dug out channels that had been filled in by cattle grazers, and they're putting logs throughout the area that will provide shade for juvenile salmon and bring in some of the insects the fish feed on. There's probably fish hanging out right underneath that nice spruce branch where they have a little bit of cover. But there have been questions raised recently about how much restoration work like this can really move the needle for salmon that have much bigger problems. A study out of Oregon State University found that despite more than $9 billion spent on salmon conservation over the last 40 years, wild stocks of the fish haven't shown notable increases in the Columbia River Basin. Hayduck acknowledged that there are limitations to how much can be done on land when salmon spend so much of their lives in the open ocean, where pollution and marine heat waves have made things difficult for the fish. It's a challenge in our world is we can do everything for the habitat side here, and then we're just letting them go out into the ocean and say, hope you come back. But he and Iaquinto stressed that the restoration work on Drift Creek It'll be good for everyone, plants, animals, insects, and even people. When the land was cut off from natural flooding, it actually caused the ground to sink. By taking down the levees and then re-flooding the floodplain, it brings in sediments and allows those lands to accrete again. So therefore building more resiliency against sea level rise. And the work will help with the cause of sea level rise too. Tidal marshes in particular are um, very efficient at sequestering carbon. Um, and so the, just the fact that these habitats exist are really uh, critical to kind of the balance of the natural ecosystem. But to fully take advantage of the billions available through the bipartisan yeah, so infrastructure law and the Inflation Reduction Act, Hayduck said nonprofits like the one he leads, they're gonna have to be proactive. We have a big push to get as many shovel-ready projects as we can ready because uh, it's never been like this. It's not going to be like this. It's a fire hose right now. It's not going to last forever. Kale joins me now. Super interesting story, as always. Um, but on that, that land, what are they going to do with it? Are they carving channels? 
Yeah, so it's really interesting actually. They got historical photos of what that land used to look like before it was converted to pasture. And you can kind of see when you're out there, there's these little depressions that the, the cattle grazers filled in where the channels used to be. So they get, have this map that they have based on historical photos and they are recarving those channels using those backhoes and that big equipment that you saw. Okay, and how much is this gonna cost? Uh, under a million bucks, which is a lot for you or I if we found that in our bank account, but in terms of environmental restoration work and especially compared to how much money is coming down the pipeline with the Inflation Reduction Act, really not that expensive. Okay, and then um, is it going to make a difference? That's a good question, and I suppose it depends on how you define making a difference. You know, I think that if you look at this land, I tend to think nature knows best. And so if this land is being converted back to how it naturally would have been, I think that that's a good thing. Will it solve the problem of struggling coho salmon? Not by itself. I mean, these salmon are facing, you know, marine heat waves in the ocean, hydroelectric dams, all kinds of environmental problems. And this one project is not going to solve all those. But I do think in the long run, if you look at it from a wide perspective, it'll probably do some good. All right, Kale Williams, making a difference. Thanks right. very much. <laughs>